afternoon. This is The Ugly Truth coming to you live from Toronto, Canada. We're here at the U.S. Consulate. It's uh, Sunday, March the 4th, 2012. And uh, there's a rally scheduled here today in Toronto as well as uh, in cities all across Canada. We're here to make our voices be heard. We know that uh, Israeli Prime Minister uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is uh, meeting with Prime Minister Harper. Part of his uh, purpose for being here will be to ask for support from uh, the Canadian government uh, should there be a conflict with Iran or perhaps even a support of a full-scale invasion of Iran to prevent them from uh, developing nuclear uh, facilities. So anyway, I'm here to cover the event. We'll have a look. we got the U.S. consulate uh, behind me here. And if we shift the perspective a little bit, you can see the small crowd of uh, protesters just gathering behind me here. Basically, we want uh, to let our voices be heard, to let Prime Minister Harper know that uh, we know that he very strongly supports the state of Israel. However, uh, Canadians do not want an attack in Iran. We don't want another war. Uh, this is another false flag. We got duped into going into Iraq and Afghanistan to get terrorists um, who had nothing to do with 9-11. You know, now they're, they're trying to make it seem that uh, Iran is a threat, and Iran is a threat to nobody. We are going to stand united in our call, no war on Iran. Start with that. No war on Iran. No war on Iran. No war on Iran. No war on Iran. This is a rally that was called and organized by the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War. It's a rally that we planned many, many weeks ago. But we found out in the process that we found out that Benjamin Netanyahu was going to be coming to Canada and was going to be staying in Ottawa for three days. And he isn't coming up here for a vacation. He is coming here very explicitly to call on the government of Canada to support an attack on Iran. Stephen Harper isn't just saying that he would support and endorse a war on Iran. He is using all diplomatic means at his disposal in the United Nations to demonize Iran, to call it, to spread lies about alleged nuclear weapons programs, and to co try to convince other countries around the world to support an attack on Iran. He is doing his job to lobby the international community to try to support this attack, which is why in Canada we have such a crucial job to do to shut him down to stop him from spreading these lies telling Stephen Harper out our first speaker is going to be coming up and talking to us today is a brother named Hamoudi Hineinu who is with the he's the president of the Middle Eastern Students Association at York University and he is on the executive of the York Federation of Students good afternoon everyone I'd like to thank each and every one of you for coming out today on probably your only day off uh, during the week to support the no attack on the Iran rally. While I was preparing my speech for today's rally, I came upon a message on the JDL, or the Jewish Defense League's website, website which I would like to share with you guys. It will, it's, a, it's like this. It is important to film these supporters of the Iranian government. There's a security threat against the Jewish community from Iran. Let us continue to document all those that attend such rallies of hate. The JDL will share all documentation with the Canadian police agencies. So now, because we oppose a war, against Iran that Benjamin Netanyahu is here to promote in Canada we have become supporters of the Iranian government I think most of us disagree with such a statement and would agree that we're here to support peace and justice I myself have witnessed the Israeli aggression on southern Lebanon in, in June, July 12, 2006 the Lebanese resistance group of Hezbollah captured two Israeli soldiers in response to the constant Israeli defiance of Lebanese sovereignty through air sea and land. That same, night, the, that same night, Israel launched attacks on Lebanese targets throughout southern Lebanon, one of which was my mother's hometown of Abba. We in an instant lost a mother, a father, a grandmother, a grandfather, and eight children. Those people I do not believe were terrorists. For the next 15 days, I will witness more death and destruction caused by the Israeli oppressor. 
In 34 days, nearly 1,200 Lebanese civilians would lose their lives for the capture of two Israeli soldiers. It has become a norm for the Israeli military to attack civilian targets and also has become a tactic to, to attack the civilians to turn them against their leaders. Now, war against Iran will only lead to the death of thousands of Iranian civilians and the destruction of a nation. So today, I believe I can speak, out, uh, speak on the behalf of all of us that we are not here to support the Iranian government, but we are here to promote a peaceful resolution to intensifying and deadly conflict. So no Netanyahu, we do not support your war against Iran. And no Mr. Harper, Canadians will not support a war against Iran. Over his, uh, throughout history we have learned that military intervention and military occupation is not a solution. So why should we be counter-progressive when we could be progressive? Thank you. One of the people who's been a lead organizer on this is able to speak to us here today. She's a sister who's been working on campaigns in solidarity with Egypt and solidarity with people from Bahrain. Please welcome Yusuf al-Bahraini. I see people from diverse groups with just one message. We are in solidarity with peace and injustice. We are in solidarity with the nations and we are not in solidarity with any government. That there are no humanitarian interventions Humanitarian interventions are not humanitarian, they're just occupations. Okay, we have been deceived when people, when the United States invaded Afghanistan, we have been deceived when the United States invaded Iraq, we have been deceived when so-called humanitarian interventions made the NATO go and invade Libya and turn Libya into a place where tribes fight each other and into a place where you can't go because a simple civil war is there in Libya now. I don't trust them because they have me supporting dictatorships in the Gulf. I can't trust them. I can't trust the United States because the U.S. 5th Fleet is helping. Whether it's being silent or even being supporting Bahraini forces in attacking innocent civilians in Bahrain. And if people can't believe that, I have photos of the Bahraini forces, the Bahraini policemen and the mercenaries going to the U.S. fleet. They have, I mean, they have been posting their photos on Facebook and Twitter all over. And no for hypocritical standards because we don't want double standards. You cannot support King Hamad in Bahrain and you cannot support King Abdullah in Saudi Arabia while you are just claiming that you are humanitarian. So shame on U.S. Shame on Israel, shame on all imperialists, and their allies too. Shame on Stephen Harper. <laughs> Our next speaker is someone who many of you have heard about before. It's a member of the Christian Peacemaker Teams who was actually uh, involved in very, very important campaigns when the Christian Peacemaker Teams went to Iraq to try to stop the attack that was going to occur there. Oh, please, sisters and brothers, if you can welcome James Loney. Good afternoon, sisters and brothers. It's good to be uh, together in solidarity, uh, walking and speaking, using our voices for peace. I um, want to uh, tell you about a, um, uh, a teenage boy that I met while I was in India. His name is Abdullahi. I, was, I met him in January when I was there. He's a member of the Afghan Youth Peace Volunteers. And uh, he grew up in a little village in uh, Bamiyan, which you may remember is where the, uh, the, the ancient Buddhist statues were uh, destroyed by the Taliban about 10 years ago. And um, this group, uh, there's, there's 10 of them right now, and they have this dream that they want to find a thousand youth in Afghanistan who uh, will embrace nonviolence and work together for peace. And uh, he said <clears throat> to me, it is clear from 30 years of war that war is not a solution to the problems in Afghanistan. In fact, it should be clear to all of humanity that war is not a solution to any problem anywhere in the world. War against terror, 7.8 million refugees in Iraq, uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan. How many killed? Nobody knows. Please, from Afghans for please. 
Peace. Please welcome Hamna Mogul. And I'm from Afghans for Peace, and I'm just here to speak on behalf of my team because we've seen that humanitarian efforts have done nothing. You can look at the state of Iraq. You can look at the state of Afghanistan. And here's my speech. The last time I checked, the same countries promoting these sanctions and interventions on Iran are the same ones dropping cluster bombs, white phosphorus, and depleted uranium on innocent civilians. There are no place to point fingers when their hands are soaked in blood from the ongoing massacres they have taken part in. Canadian, American, and Israeli governments should have a closer look at their actions towards the indigenous people of the lands they claim and the crimes against humanity they have committed under false fabrications and covered them with a whale of honor. The same country that chooses to denounce Iran for its nuclear weapons is actually the biggest arm de arms dealer in this world. So isn't it quite ironic that a criminal nation, Israel, is accusing Iran for the crimes they themselves commit daily? These war strategies are no different than the ones in the past. Weapons of mass destruction versus nuclear weapons, they really aren't creative with their schemes. They come up with the same silly old lies each and every time. Can we, look, can we please look into how much did the U.S. spend on Predator drones in the past 10 years or how much Harper spent on fighter jets? We would rather resort to making cheaper food fast than growing natural food because our money is better spent on an arms race that funds this modern warfare that takes every step closer to World War III. I don't want my taxes being wasted to kill innocents. I wish it would help the indigenous people of this land first. Thank you. Let's stop fueling this war machine. Peace and love. Palestine. Occupation is a crime. Our next speaker is someone who needs very little introduction to many of the people who are out here today. Former Vice President of the Canadian Arab Federation. He also sits on the Coordinating Committee of the Toronto Coalition to Stop the War and the Steering Committee of the Canadian Peace Alliance. Sisters and brothers, please welcome Ali Mala. Brothers, sisters, friends, Salamu Alaikum and peace be yours. We stand here today in support of people's right to have their own self-determination to choose whichever government they want to have. When you hear Stephen Harbour talking about democracy and human rights, tell him, shut up! Tell him he's a liar! You remember two years ago, in the streets of Toronto, when thousands and thousands of Torontians gather against the G20, the federal government spent more than 1.2 billion to oppress us, to suppress us, to attack us. And now they have, they have the audacity to talk about the human rights. Why are they silent on the human rights and the killing in Bahrain? What about the hundred thousands demonstrating in the street in Yemen? What about the human rights violation in Saudi Arabia? We know they are not for human rights. But as Brother James and others have said, they are for war because they profit from war and we the poor pay for it. Brothers and sisters, we have nothing to hide. We come in the open and in front of everyone to say what we think. We as a Canadian do not support Stephen Harbour and his warmongers government. This is the same government have been targeting groups, organization and students for standing up and speaking up for Palestine. The release of the prisoners. Well, Jason Kenny, read my lips. And hear my words, you and Stephen Harbour and your other Zionist supporters. A day will come, will be no more occupation of the people. United will never be defeated. The people united will never be defeated. It's a lie. It is a complete lie. And we know that there are massive numbers of Jews in this country and around the, country, the world who are standing up in opposition to the policies of the Israeli government. And we're incredibly happy to have someone here today to speak about that very thing. So please, sisters and brothers, welcome Judy Deutsch from Independent Jewish Voices. Yeah, it's um, 
very moving to be here today to be a spe one of the speakers um, protesting this uh, terrible situation. Um, I'm thinking about a time that I spoke before on a panel a number of years ago when Israel had attacked uh, Gaza and Lebanon. It was a panel of, of uh, Jewish people, um, including um, Ursula Franklin and Anton Querty. And Anton Querty said that he was ashamed to be Jewish and ashamed to be Canadian. Um, this was when uh, Ignatieff said that he didn't lose any sleep over the uh, bombing of Lebanon and Gaza. Sure. The first point I wanted to bring up was, uh, was about the media. That We all know that it's um, the lies of the media, um, particularly a number of people have already talked about the demonization of whoever happens to be the enemy, particularly the United States. I think there's also um, the media is also guilty of omission of, of so many things, particularly now, and I'll get to it, the nuclear weapons um, um, by Israel as well as the stationing of, of uh, uh, already nuclear weapons in, uh, by the United States and, and by Britain. Um, I also wanted to talk about the particular military situation with Iran. Iran is now surrounded by 45 military, U.S. military bases. Um, also, there's overall silence about the U.S. and Israeli nuclear weapons. There are still about 23,000 nuclear weapons on Earth, many on high alert so that they can be fired within minutes. Israel, Pakistan, and India have not signed a non-proliferation treaty, so they're not monitored by the International Atomic Energy Agency. Iran has signed a non-proliferation treaty, has no nuclear weapons, and is monitored. Israel has anywhere between 100 and 400 nuclear weapons. You know, over the last decade, the U.S. and its war-mongering allies waged two wars, one in Afghanistan and the other in Iraq. We need to ask ourselves, after waging a war or two wars for an entire decade, is Afghanistan any better today than it was 10 years ago? We need to ask ourselves, is Iraq any better today than it was 10 years ago? You know, when the, when the rest of the world says, let us have the Middle East as nuclear weapons free, America and Israel say, oh no, no, it is a threat to Israel. Imagine you want to have a nuclear weapons free Middle East, but that becomes a threat to Israel. If America, Canada, and all of their allies had used the money, the $1.2 trillion that they used in Afghanistan, waging a war, killing innocent people, destroying their homes, making millions of people refugees, if they had distributed that $1.2 trillion on the 5 million families in Afghanistan, do you know what each Afghan family would have got? $240,000 per family in Afghanistan with nobody killed, no Canadian killed, no American killed, no Afghan killed, no refugees. They have spent more than $4 trillion in Iraq on the war. If they had distributed this money in Iraq, each Iraqi family would have got $800,000. You know, these warmongers tell us that they want to export democracy to other countries. As we have already heard, Stephen Harper stole that election last year. So we as Canadians say that there is a democratic deficit in Canada. Let us keep our democracy at home. Let's not export it abroad. We need democracy here.